Uh, and we're going to be talking about... Uh, is that how you spell annual? I always worry about my double letters. Annual um, yield. When you go to a bank, you'll see a sign that says APR on one side and APY on the other side. At least at the state credit union, they used to have this sign up next to the tellers. And they would say, here's our loan rates, and you'd have APR on one side and a different number for APY on the other side. Um, APR is the true um, interest uh, for any time, any amount of time, where the other interest rate, APY, is only usable for one year. So what happens with APR is it's this formula, you know, the good old compound interest formula. <laughs> the problem with that formula is most people don't walk around with scientific calculators in their pocket. General public usually only has, you know, a simple calculator, four-function calculator. So what banks do is, since a lot of people don't even know this formula or don't even know how to work with this formula, they come up with this thing called APY. This will tell people how much interest they would earn in exactly one year if they put their money in the bank. So this one turns around and goes back to this formula. Or, you know... The simple one that most people know, I equals BRT. And the cool thing here is, well, if we're talking about exactly one year, what does T become? One. one. It becomes one. So the formula even gets easier. It becomes I equals P times R. So if you know how much money you're going to put away in the bank, and we know the interest rate that it's calculated at, we can find the interest rather quickly. Just multiply those two together, and you get the interest for the entire year. So this formula is a lot easier to work with if you're just going to put your money away and you're only worried about a year. This one works after that. If you're going to keep your money in there for 15 years, you, you have to go back to this formula. That one becomes irrelevant. So how this works is this. If we're looking for an APY... Can't you just take that and, like you said, 15 years? Can't you take that one and multiply by 15 years? No, that's the thing. This one gets interest on top of... Interest. This one only calculates interest once at the very end. It doesn't do anything in between the beginning and the end, where this one does it n times a year. And that's the big difference between simple interest and compound interest. So APY, you start off, you have to have an APR. So let's say we have a 8% APR. And we want to calculate out what is the rate if we change it into simple interest for one year? So to do this, we're going to um, let P equal a dollar. And T equals one. Oh, 8% uh, compounded monthly. We have to have a compounded interest. Great. All right, so if we have an 8% APR compounded monthly interest rate, you let P equal a dollar, you let T equal exactly one year, that'll transform it into APY. So you start with your formula and you go A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. Yes, the book has another formula for it, but what's the point of memorizing or using another formula? It just gives you more headache. Wait, wait, wait. What? So what, what you're teaching us is the same thing that we that we had up we had to do in all of them. But you're teaching us a different way? Uh, I never taught it, so I want to teach it. Yeah. I know, I asked for it on the homework and I didn't realize I did it. You told me that why Yeah, yeah, blah blah blah. I want to show you where it comes from first. Um so we don't know what A is. Oh actually, no, we don't know what A is. So we say A, P we're gonna to change to one dollar. A dollar. So basically it just goes away because one times anything is one. No, but any it's not one, it's anything. So you get one plus the interest rate here is 
8 percent, so you go 0 0.08, divided by n is 12, raised to the 12 times 1. So I don't have to write anything because 12 times 1 is just 12. All right, calculate out this side. Then you get 8 equals 1 point. Well, how far you want to go? Uh, four decimal places. One four zero eight two eight two nine. Now, when you go to the grocery store and you buy a candy bar that is worth a dollar, then you go to the cash register. They charge you a dollar. No, they charge you a dollar and seven cents because our tax is seven percent. So here is your candy bar. It's a dollar. How much tax did you get charged? Eight cents. 8.29. So, the interest rate on this must be 8.29. So we've changed it into a 8.29% simple interest for one year. This is APY. Well, there's a formula. Yeah, there's a formula, but where did it come from? I, you know I don't just go, here's a formula. <laughs> Merry Christmas. God knows where it came from, but here you go. Now, I like showing you why it works. I got a question. Go for it. What about the one times? One times anything is? Anything. One times two. One times five. One times seven. One times X. So putting a one here... Has no effect on anything. How many did I eat? Yeah, what did I want? Oh, you weren't listening to me. You go to the grocery store and you buy a candy bar for a dollar. You come out of the store and you have to pay a dollar and seven cents. So the interest rate was seven percent. So here's your candy doll, a candy bar. It's a dollar. We originally started with a dollar. So if you remove that, what's left over must be your interest rate. Multiply that by 100 and you get to 8.2. So that's what's And that's in just a dollar. Yeah, just, that's why you use a dollar, so you can just find the interest rate. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, do we have to do that last part, the APY 8.2? Yes. So that's what we're looking for. Look, okay, so I needed to take away a 1. So you multiply that 1.0829. Uh, get rid of the 1. And then multiply by. Can you just move it over two places? And take away the one. Oh, stuck with your two places. Which oh, way are you going to go with it? This way. Always? No. Okay. <laughs> if you want to take it to a yeah. two places. So let me show you how this works. If you take uh, $500 and you put it in this account, and you only keep it in there for a single year. You only keep it in there for a single year. Now notice I'm setting this up as compound interest. Remember, most people in the world do not even know this formula exists, even though they're taught in eighth grade. So type this in your calculator, and you get A is equal to? $541. And $0.49. So they earn $41.49 by leaving this money in the account for uh, 12 months. It earned interest every single month. About a... Uh, about three dollars and fifty cents every single month, give or take a little bit. All right, let's do it the other way. The other way says, well, let i equals prt, but t is equal to one. one. So we get i is equal to my principal is five hundred dollars. My interest rate is not point zero eight. That's compound interest. The simple interest rate is eight point two nine. So I'm going to go 0 0.0829, and the time, of course, is, well, one, one year. Type that in your cup. Just trust me for a little bit. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out why you went back to the 8.29. Hmm. This is the simple interest rate. It goes with the simple interest. This is the compound interest rate. It goes yep. with compound interest. I can't mix and match compound interest and simple interest. What do I Forty-one dollars and forty-nine dollars. Forty-one dollars and. So you did a whole other problem, but you look back to the answer that you just got. Previous. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why the, you just, this calculation tells me what interest rate I can use, simple interest-wise, for one year to give me the same thing as the old compound interest. Think of it this way: 
<coughs> if you don't have a scientific calculator, you can't do exponents. So to get away from exponents, I come up with this other interest rate that only works for one year, and I can use it in a simple, simple interest formula. Notice it's only off by four cents. So that's an annual percentage yield. I put five hundred dollars away. Hmm? Is that APY annual percentage yield? Yield. Yield. Annual percentage yield only works for one year. Where APR will work for any amount of time as long as you use the compound interest formula. APY is only there so you can use simple interest rather than compound interest, but it only works for one year. <coughs> like pulling teeth. If you want, there is the formula. It's the last one on your sheet. What's that formula say? Really great fine. Yeah, I know. What's the formula say? Uh, parentheses A over P. Parentheses. I know. There's, what's on the left hand side? There's nothing. There's nothing. Well, I think. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Maybe I should say R equals. Then we need something. Do we need to add R? Yeah. Now this one is different. This one is not finding your APY. This one is saying, um, what is your interest rate? Compounded interest rate. Your annual for uh, effective yield. For instance, if you buy um, stock and it costs you $50 a share. Do you all know what a share is? Yeah. It's like a $50 bill, but the value of the $50 bill is going to change day to yeah. day. Money actually does do this, and there is uh, companies that literally just change money. They change American dollars into French uh, money, into Japanese money, and they sell it to the uh, New Zealanders, and they make a profit on it, which doesn't make any sense to me because money is just, well, money. But let's say we buy our stock for $50 a share. Um, uh, let's say five years ago. Is it still 8.3? Yep. Well, it's a little mixture of 8.3 and 8.4, but it's fine. Today, it is worth um, $75 a share. Find uh, APR. I want to know if I actually put this money away into a savings account, um, what interest rate would I have been earning? All right, so you plug everything you know into this formula. Now, I don't know literally A and P. I don't know how many shares I owned, but it really doesn't matter. You can break it down to I own one share and I sold one share. So you go R equals, A is how much you ended up with, $75, P is how much you started with, 50 you raise it to the 1 over Y, Y being how many years you're talking about, oh, five. five years, so this would be 1 fifth minus 1. Now you've got to be careful with this. In a calculator, this is going to have to look like this. And you have to put a parentheses for the one fifth. You can't just go carrot one divided by five. So it has to be parentheses one divided by five <laughs> minus one. Yeah. That's how much I ended up with, so that becomes A. 50 is how much I started with, which was 50. I got 0 0.0. Point zero Final point amount. Principal. What you start with. So it's basically the um, alpha being the principal. Yeah. The final amount over the beginning amount. Your final amount over your beginning amount. Now, if you type it in like this, you should get some ugly decimal point something. 0 0.084. 0 0.084. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. Yeah. So, this is an interest rate, so what do I have to do to it? Multiply by 100. That becomes? 8.44. 8.44 percent compounded yearly. So if you had this um, stock and you were using it to save money or to generate money, you could have earned the same amount of money if you could find a bank account that earned 8.44 percent. What's the chances of that happening? 
uh, not very likely. Right. So you just must use like less than twice as good. Um, when you're talking about percentages, you take the whole number in three decimal places. Because what will happen is you'll move the decimal place over twice, and then I want one degree of accuracy. So you could have like 438.7%. Okay. So if you take a whole number in three decimal places, you're safe. You're safe. When in doubt, use four decimal places all the time. Oh, so 40% right well, there, so you've got that 8.44? Or 8.4. Okay. Right. Either one works. Compounded yearly. That, this is a, an account that would be compounded yearly. It's not easy to do with compounded monthly because it gets tricky. Would you use, would you use the, um, the division key or the fraction key? Personally, stick with the division key. Fraction key does not work with decimals. I'm not using it. Parentheses, 75 divided by five. Parentheses, parentheses, one divided by five. End the parentheses, minus one. Okay. <coughs> oh, you can use this formula to kind of discuss uh, for your college tuition. Um, you can put the present value of the college tuition and then how much they expect it to change by the time you know your little baby gets 18 years old. And you can find out how much it has gone up on a yearly basis. It's generally about 10 or 11%, if I remember right. It's kind of scary. All right. The next part is a mixture of 8.3 and 8.4, but we're starting to lean towards 8.4, so we'll call it 8.4. 8.4 has a little stock part. Um, the only thing I tell you about stocks is they give you all these numbers and it's supposed to tell you how you know healthy a stock is, if it's going to go up, if it's going to go down. And for the most part, those are big major guesses on some analysts uh, tool set. Uh, so if you do buy stock, be wary. Don't be uh, selling it just because it goes down a little bit because stock always goes a little bit up, a little bit down. The ones you have to worry about, like um, Netflix. I used to own Netflix stock. It did this for the longest time. And then Netflix said, okay, let's change our name. And then, okay, let's change how we do our subscription. Their cash, they went, Phew. it took one day to do that. Well, they were saying they were going to separate the DVD and the streaming. And that freaked out people because there was going to be cost for both of them. Um, and then they were going to change the DVD to one name, just by mail or something stupid like that, and leave Netflix as the streaming, and then people freaked out and the stock prices took a dive. Uh, I kind of punished them for doing that. But that happens, you know, the stock will go up, stock will go up, and then some stupid thing happens and the stock goes... I didn't mean to go through the radio box. I didn't see something in the radio box. It was, um... Sued. Yeah. yeah. That really happened. Yeah. 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 Recently. Yeah. yeah, pull it up on um, Yahoo. Just type in yeah. Netflix stock and pull up a year of it, and you'll see that it's going up. Yeah, going up really nicely. They changed it. To the and then they changed back to what they were doing, basically. So, eight, uh, four. Four. I am going to show you that it is possible to become a millionaire if you're willing to starve yourself for the rest of your life. So we don't need the... <laughs> I'm not going to deal with stocks other than maybe this type of problem right here. Where, you know, the end price, the beginning price. Other than that, it's not worth teaching. Uh, systematic savings comes from this. Um, put $100 into an account that earns 7% oh, compounded monthly. <coughs> oh. Each month. Now, compounded monthly and you're going to put away the $100 every single month. With compound interest, what it's called is, is it's called a lump sum savings account. You take a certain amount of money, you put it into the account, and then you never touch it again for as long as it's in there. So you don't deposit any more money, you don't make any withdrawals, and you just let it sit there. So it's called a lump sum savings. 
How many people put $10,000 into a savings account and let it sit there? Not me. Not me. So where, what's a better way of doing it? That way. That way. Take a little bit every month and just kind of put it away. And what happens is, two things happen. You're putting $100 away, so you're always increasing how much you're saving. Plus, all that money is going to gain interest. So in the beginning, the interest is really small. But as your amount accumulates, the interest starts stacking up. So this is called a systematic savings plan. It is the best one. Um, just to put a little bit of money away and seeing how much you end up with in a year is amazing. Um, what's nice about this is also is if you want to buy like a TV and it's really expensive, um, there, you have two options. You can save up the money to buy it. That's what my parents did. Or you can go out with your credit card or get a loan and buy it that way. Now, if you put the money away and you save it, what are you earning? Interest. So you get money on top of money. If you borrow it, you're paying interest. So the cost might have been $1,000, but by the end, you might have been paying $1,300, $1,400 for that same TV. So it's always better to save and earn the interest than to borrow and pay the interest. Uh, what's the, like, the best time frame you think like, to know when you like making the best interest? You never know. Like, it's so always a guess. Like, oh, are you talking about monthly or? I'm saying, like, like you said, put save it, put money yeah, in there, put it away. and save interest on. Like, you check it to see, like, when you check it next time, out, like, what's the best time frame to know when you save it? You never, it, you just save it. And <laughs> you, you, you try to get the highest interest rate you can, yeah. but right now interest rates are at one percent, uh, which is ridiculously small. <laughs> well, that's kind of what, kind of what I was about to ask you. Um, you said if you put like, just a little bit of money away, see how much it earns. I would like to do that, but can I really find a deal like this? Seven percent. Uh, uh, what? Well, actually, stop. It, it offers risk. It offers a high possible percentage, but it also offers downward. Where savings, no matter what the percent rate is, it's always upward because you don't lose money. Yeah. Stop, stop gives you that possibility of, yeah, you're going to succeed, but there's also that possibility you're going to... That's a gamble. That's a safe. This is better than gambling. Going to a casino, I'd rather put my money here. Yeah, it's a real Yeah, it is a gamble. You get lucky. You pick stocks that are going to go up. So they like see like a chance or a Or as it goes up, you can set what's called a, a bottom. And if it hits the bottom, it sells automatically, so you always make a profit. Ain't no crash in here. That's safe. This is very safe. But there's not a lot of So that you had bought a share of uh, Netflix here, buddy. Yeah. What would you have now? Well, no, not nothing. It never disappears completely. It never disappears. You always have a little bit of value. Yeah. Stocks has a golden rule. Buy low, sell high. That's the only rule in stocks. All right. We can discuss this after. So, if I put $100 away into the account, at the end of month one, what happens? Well, we get A equals 100 um, times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 raised to the 12. Uh, yeah, 12. Hmm, 12. Uh, now, here comes interesting. The 12 here is for the compounded monthly. The 12 here is for the compounded monthly. I have to put T here. How long has the money been in the account so far? A month. So what do I put in for T? Uh -huh. 1 over 12. So this is 1 over 12. Now notice what happens. 12 times 1 over 12 is better known as 1, because it's one month. Um, now at the end of month 1, we're also going to add on another $100. So my first $100 here that I put in at the beginning of the month, or the end of last month, is going to gain some interest. It's going to gain some interest, but I'm also going to deposit another $100. This is N, has to be the same as this one. This is T, how long was it in the account? One month. 
But this has to be in years. So to make it in years, it has to be 1 over 12. Just like when we were doing simple. But that's going to go back to 1. It 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 It'll be 1 month as an exponent. Add 100 to that. And add 100 to that. So oh, I don't care. I'm not even worried about what the answer is. Oh, okay. But if you want, you can figure it out. At the end of month 2. I just want to show you what, what builds up. So, you guys are talkative today. At the end of month two, you're going to get A equals. This one's going to earn another month of interest. This one's going to earn its first month of interest. And then I'm going to add on another 100. So, the first one gets another month of interest. 200 off. Mm, not one of these hundreds is going to add to another one because they're all different because they have this weird stuff next to it. This one's going to earn interest for the first time. That's a whole lot going on. And then you're going to add on another hundred dollars. I just want to show you how complex this is. It's not, not this way, not this way. No, don't worry about it. So, on the first month, you put $100 away. At the end of the first month, you earn interest on that first $100, and you give your bank account another 100 bucks. That first $100 that you put in there on the end of the second month is going to earn two months of interest. The second 100 you put in there is going to earn its first month of interest, and you're going to tag in, deposit another $100. All right, so this is the last one I'm going to do this way. And, uh, month three. But you start seeing a pattern. A equals 100 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 3 over 12. Because that first 100, not yet, that first 100 gets interest for the third month. The second 100 that I put in is going to earn interest for another month. So this will be plus 100, 1 plus 0 0.07 over 12 raised to the second power. Plus, this hundred is now going to earn its first month of interest. So it gets a one plus point zero seven divided by twelve raised to the first, and then I'm going to give my bank account another hundred. So this pattern, I can keep it going forever and ever and ever. So you just drop the twelve off. Well, twelve times three over twelve is three. So if I go to the fourth month, it would be a hundred. That thing raised to the fourth. A hundred. That thing raised to the third. 100, that thing raised to the second, 100, that thing raised to the first, and then add on another 100. So the pattern kind of continues. Is this the way we're going to calculate it? No. Thank God for algebra. There is an algebraic trick to see where this thing is going. And where this thing is going, it's not pretty, but it's better than that. Oh my God, yeah, it's 10 times better than that. Go for it. See, this one was 2 over 12, right? Well, 3 over 12 is the same thing as 3. Right, this would be 12 times 2 over 12, which is 2, and 1 times 1 over 12, which is 1. Uh, the formula is this, and it is different than the book for one special reason. The book's formula stinks. Disagree with me on this because it is not the most friendly one. This one's much better. So systematic savings is equal to uh, your principal times n divided by little r, parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus r over n, raised to the nt, oh, minus are. 1. Oh, I agree, it is easier. I'm sorry. It is easier than this. My god, yes. So here's the thing. If I keep putting $100 away into a bank account at 7% interest compounded monthly, how much will I have in five years? Just five years. So same thing, five years. Oops. Five years. So for A, would I put... A is the final amount. How much you end up with. I don't know what a that is. A equals... A equals... P is... 100. 100. N is? 7%. 12. Oh. Compounded monthly, so N is? 12. 12. 
Basically, this little product here tells you how much you put away every year. $1,200 every single year of your cash, of your cash. And my rate is 7%. And your rate is 7%, so 0 0.07 goes down here. Parentheses, parentheses. That's important for the calculator that you put both of them. 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 5. Better known as 60. Minus 1. To type this in your calculator, you just type it in the way you say it. 100 times 12 divided by 0 0.07, parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12. Just don't forget your little carrot there. And don't forget the minus 1. Minus 1. So, 100 times 12 divided by 0 0.07, parentheses, parentheses. That's pretty good. Oh, it's like $7,000. $7,159.29? Not bad. That's only five years of this savings. So the final amount should be, in money, $7,159.29. Now I have to ask a simple question. Is this all of my money or is some of it interest? How much? How do you find out? It should be $29.29. No, no, no. So I'm just take take that you, take, you take how much you put in every single month, you multiply it by how many months are in a year, you multiply by how many years you've done this. This will tell you how much money came out of your pocket. So this is out of 6, pocket. Yes. Is that how you spell pocket? Oh well. Oh, Equals $6,000. So $6,000 of this was actually yours. The cool thing is, how much of it is interest? Just $1,159. $1,159.29. $1 $1 $1 $1 just in interest. That's the amount of money the bank paid you to let them borrow $100 every single month. That ain't it. That's not bad. It's money that came from you know, Miracle Land. But if you gave them $6,000, that means you... Yeah, but here's the thing. That's what I'm saying. That's you don't have $6,000. Yeah, well, you don't have $6,000. You have $6,000 you can put into a bank account right now? But if you put $100 every single month for five years, it's $6,000. Yeah, that's right. 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 And earn interest. The next five years, it'll earn more than that. Do you want to see? Like, for instance, okay, I stopped my savings plan here. I'm done with putting $100 away every single month. So you're going to let that money sit at, in the bank account. Just let it sit there. Yeah. It's now a lump sum. It's how much money you have. 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12. What about your pocket? It's not That's 6,000. Yeah, this is your total of this. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Wrong number. Yeah. 7159.29. Uh, raised to the, let's do it for another five years. Let's just let it sit there for another five years. So let's see here. Time, raised to 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12, raised to the 60th power. What's really nice is now you have $10,000. Hey guys, no, no, no. This is your money. Ten thousand one hundred forty-eight. Ten thousand eight. Ten thousand. Oh, and the reason I got that is I kept all my decimals. But if you're close to that, you're okay. So, how much interest did you earn from seven thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and twenty-nine cents? Three thousand. Three thousand. Oh, three thousand and ten thousand. I got $2,990, but estimate. estimate. Why is it more? Well, this plan, you're building up your money slowly. This one, you had a lump sum. So if you have a lump sum and you have a ton of it, put it into a bank account, let it sit there forever and earn interest. I get what you got, man. Yeah. But if I kept this plan up for another five years, watch this, this is cool. If I kept it up for another five years, Let's see, that would be 120. What did you get at? 
If I kept my $100 a month up for another five years, you would end up with $17,308. When I do that. In 10 years. And then, if you kept the plan going for the entire 10 years, you would have ended up with $17,000. $100 a month for 17 years. 10 years. For 10 years, $17,000. Is that $17,000? No, no, no. $17,000 total. total. Um, it's $12,000 of my money. So it's $5,000 of interest. Profit. Uh, that's at percent Yeah, that's that high percentage that you're not going to get right now. But if you got, you know, CDs, mutual funds, all that fun stuff, you can play around. That's a bill. I'm on my way. What's a bill? Place a bill. Well, like what you're saying right there, uh -huh. I am I'm looking for a way that I can earn money without <coughs> having to work so hard. So I be rich. <laughs> be rich. So I do want to learn how to, you know, do this kind of maybe the stock or whatever, you know, so I can earn both. But you, before you could do anything like that. <laughs> I Lottery tickets. Oh, the news! It is a who won. Yeah, there's always someone. There's always someone. It takes at least like four You You have a better chance of being struck by lightning on a sunny day. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. Same thing. Okay. You was in your own little word. I feel like four people ask that same question. Oh well. <laughs> you was. I was thinking of the words and the numbers. Told you. You know you would think about your lottery ticket. <laughs> no, actually, what I was thinking of. If you do win the lottery, and it's a million plus, don't I'm spend your money. Me. Don't spend it, because then eventually you will have nothing. Nothing. Put the whole thing away into a savings account, a hey, mutual fund, stock, whole thing. Then what you do is you live off the interest. Interest. Yep. Because the interest on a million dollars, even at a simple five percent interest rate, is like thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. Damn, a million dollars feel good to me. But if you spend your million dollars, it goes. Do you know how many lottery winners are broke now? Yes. All of them. No, 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 no. Not all of them. No. The smart ones aren't. Yeah. The ones that just think. Oh, it's an infinite amount of money, and they start just spending it like they have nothing. They don't understand. I love the day before the rain. Shh. Let's do this. So, how much money do you need to save every month at 5% compounded monthly for 30 years to save a half a million dollars? Half a million dollars 30 years from now is about how much people need, minimally, to retire. About $500,000, because then you start um, paying out... You know, if you don't have a pension, especially, you start paying out your monthly bills from this yeah. amount of money. So I need to start saving now. I highly suggest it. Uh, Let's find out how much I need to save. Oh, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> so, A equals P N little r, parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus R over N raised to the N T oh. minus 1. And plug in what you know. My P is... Do I know... No, don't start with P. Do I know A? 
Yeah, that's 500,000. That's 500,000. I don't have it now. I need to generate it. So this is a half a million dollars. I don't know what P is. I don't know what P is. The R. Time. I'm sorry, N? 12. 12. 12. R? Uh, 0. 0.05. Parentheses, parentheses. 1 plus 0. 0.05 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 30, 30 better known as 360, minus 1. Now, just like um, the compound interest formula that you're trying to solve for P, you ignore P and you type everything else into your calculator. Okay, so what's that 12 times 30? Do I need 360. Multiply it out. You have to. It has to be done first. It's 360. Here, let me do it up here at the board. Okay. Cross them off. 360. Do you say everything? Everything to the, you know, ignore the P, 12 divided by 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, all that mess. Is it 813? I don't know yet. That's what I heard. 832.25863. So 500,000 equals P times 832.2586. Whoa, why are we coming in Always go four decimal places when you're getting this number because you better accuracy. The one, the number next to P, all these yeah, go four to Divide both sides by that ugly number. Six hundred point Six hundred. Whoa! Why were you using the decimal right here? Six hundred dollars a month, approximately. Okay, so you don't have to keep I got um, 77 cents, but I use the yeah, whole seven, number. Seven, seven, seven. Now, be careful. With this answer, you have to say 600.77 per, per year, year. Month. month. Per month. We're doing it on a compounded monthly basis. So we're going to put away money every month. So if you can put away this amount of money every single month for the next 30 years, you'll have a half a million dollars. Um. Exactly. How many people have said nothing? So here's the other half of the coin. Hello. Thirty years. <laughs> Thirty years from now, will six hundred dollars buy you the same amount of things today? No. No. So as time goes on, more than likely you can start saving about six hundred dollars a month. Uh, two things happen. You um, you know you have your kids. All your bills go towards your kids, and the food towards your kids. Once your kids are out of your house. Hopefully. <laughs> you'll have some extra money that you can start putting away. Um, and you'll have plenty of time to do it. So $600 a month near the end of, you know, closer to retirement becomes a lot easier. $600.77. Stop saying that. $600.77. He wants it to be $677. I want it good.